Salute, my Quick Classics friends. Welcome to this edition of Quick Classics on this uh, Wednesday, excuse me, May the uh, 26th, 2021. Um, as always, if you like the content, please click a like, subscribe. It helps the channel. We're approaching that 1K mark. And with your help, we'll get there and far beyond, hopefully. Uh, today, I wanted to talk a little bit about Hecate, the Greek goddess of witchcraft. Now, um, I, I chose this particular goddess to talk about because I've been speaking quite a bit on podcasts and radio lately about uh, witchcraft. And uh, Hecate has historically been associated uh, with the practice of witchcraft. She it was associated with the night, with the moon, with uh, magic, uh, necromancy, with uh, liminality, with crossroads, um, with a number of things. She was a kind of chthonic deity, um, often depicted as holding two torches or a key, uh, ostensibly the, the key to life and death. And um, often uh, represented in kind of triplicate form, the the um, which makes me think about the maiden, mother, and crone stages, uh, but also um, um, uh, in kind of a, a Clash of the Titans uh, kind of representation of, of uh, the three witches that you see there. Uh, you could also view that as a kind of, of representation of uh, Hecate. She was the goddess of earth, or, or had power certainly to wield manipulating earth, or excuse me, um, the sky, um, the sea, and earth. And these were powers that stemmed from her parentage. Um, her parents were the Titans, Perses, and Artesia. And she she sort of operated on the the fringes of, of the Olympian pantheon, not not a central goddess. Uh, and because of this, she she was associated with um being a kind of intermediary uh between the Olympians and the Titans. Uh the Olympus and uh, the underworld in the case of the Titans. Um, the origin of Hecate is, is largely unknown. She certainly had um, large followings in Thessaly and also in the Phrygian region of uh, Anatolia, Asia Minor. Um, I'm inclined to think that like so many of the Greek gods, that Hecate had a... Um, had Eastern origins, uh, particularly when you you look at um, <clears throat> there were other similar deities in the Egyptian pantheon, like a kit, whose name is actually phonetically similar to Hecate, uh, who was a goddess of fertility and also associated with magic. Um, it's been posited that etymologically the the roots of the name descend from uh, the the Greek word hekon, which means will, uh, and this would certainly fall in line with the practice of witchcraft, the the placement of the will over nature, the bending of, of natural forces to some some kind of nefarious end. Um, now, in, in terms of source material, uh, there's there's quite a bit. I, it, it's not to say that that Hecate was was necessarily an obscure goddess. Uh, she was certainly mysterious, but well represented nonetheless in iconography and statuary uh, in the various places, particularly in the the places in Greece and Asia Minor that I mentioned, and also in Athens. Um, the first mention of Hecate, interestingly enough, is in Hesiod's Theogony, uh, written in the 8th century B.C. And um, there is even a Homeric hymn which mention, mentions Hecate as well. Um, he the worship of Hecate seems to survive uh, um, 
quite a long time um, into late antiquity and certainly uh, even into the Middle Ages and other iterations uh, of her personality, um, she, which, of course, she became uh, even more so associated with witchcraft. Uh, it seems the longer that her cult uh, survived, even though it went underground um, in late antiquity. Uh, she was also associated with uh, herbalism and the mixing of, of poisons. Um, there were certain plants that were sacred to her, like um, the yew tree, uh, garlic, uh, which of course was medicinal, but there were other um, uh, potentially medicinal and poisonous plants that were sacred to her, such as the mandrake and all manner of belladonna, which of course are deadly. Um, the dog and interestingly enough, the polecat, which could either be a, a kind of weasel ferret kind of creature or a skunk. Um, so there are these, these interesting totemistic associations, uh, with Hecate, uh, outside of, uh, what we know of her as a goddess, uh, not only in written record, but the mythological record of the Egyptians as well. Um, the, um, there's one other thing that probably bears mention, uh, it maybe is a kind of footnote to, uh, the origins of her name. Uh, Hecate was, was worshipped in the home in many cases, uh, and as such she was a kind of goddess of the house or... Uh, the Greek word for that would be oikos, which you can see is is phonetically similar to Hecate. Oikos, Hecate, that first part without, uh, in the case of oikos, without the, the aspirative mark at the beginning. Um, so all in all, uh, Hecate is a, a kind of a mysterious figure, though I would not say that she's a completely obscure figure. Uh, in Greek mythology. Uh, but again, given the fact that I, I've talked about heck, uh, witchcraft on a number of podcasts, I thought that it would only be fitting in the next episode of Quick Classics to uh, discuss Hecate, uh, the Chthonic Greek goddess of witchcraft. So I hope that this has been informative. Um, I should note that um, I, I teach classes on the biblical perspective um, the ancient Near Eastern perspective on witchcraft, uh, my certifications, biblical anthropology, uh, biblical demonology, and preternatural morphology all have witchcraft coursework, and they're on sale for 125 bucks uh, each this week, so it's a great time to get registered. Uh, and I've also got a couple of, of um, books, uh, e-books, that'll be forthcoming on the subject. Uh, the Book of the Gray, which is a collection on the history and culture of witchcraft, and a publication of my master's thesis, which was on neo-paganism. Uh, so I'll, I'll keep you um, informed about the uh, latest goings-on uh, in those regards. But thanks for tuning in to Quick Classics, and I will see you soon. Godspeed.